I've been drinking. I've been drinking. Yeah, you know I don't know the words, but welcome back to my channel. We are about to get into this episode of season three, episode nine. I'll put a ring on it. Blast from the past. Yeah, you're going to see what I'm talking about with that in a minute. So we get back to where we left off last week with Dr. Nicole talking to the guests, to the couples rather. And she jumped right in with Kenneth, and he was so upset. He's like, look, she always discredited me like I don't do nothing. You know, always speaking negative and with just cause. He, You know, she made him feel small. So Dr. Nicole asked Shorty, you know, what does she hear him saying? And she was like, you know, he's saying that, that I discredit him, and I don't give him any credit for what he does, and you don't, Shorty, you don't. But she says he doesn't listen to what she says. He can, you know, be telling her about X, Y, and Z. And I guess he hearing uh, J, K, L, you know, is not comprehending to him. And that's his problem. So Dr. Nicole said, what you're pointing out, which was very profound, is you're talking about the branches, but you're not getting into the roots. Listen up. but you're not talking about roots. Do you think there are some root challenges about whether or not you see long-term together as is if the person brings all of themselves to the conversation and you bring all of yourself to the conversation, is that good in its present state? Is it good enough? Yeah. Okay. Let's move on. Then Dr. Nicole goes on to tell the couples that they are about to go and date someone from their past or continue with the person that they are dating now. So they got to go into, you know, they whole plethora of people that they dated and I guess figure out who affected them the most. So she starts with Alfonso. Fonzo like, hmm, now let me see. Then he said, I like to date Tanisha. And then Shay's like, oh, he remembered her name. He must really like her because you don't remember nobody name. <laughs> so I'm like, ooh, Fonzo, little shade. Um, so then she goes on to ask Charlie. Um, oh, ask uh Shay who she wants to date. She said, well, the only one that she really connected with on a you know genuine had a genuine conversation a good connection was a SAR. So she's gonna go back to redeem herself. Next it's Charlie. Well Charlena, I like to call her Charlie. She goes, you know what? I'll pick Chris. I'm like, what? What? Mr. have an ulterior motive and <laughs> look at Otis face. He's like, uh uh so really like, you like a boy like that, huh? <laughs> she like, I just want to talk to him. I just want to talk. Is that all you want to do, Char? What about old Chris really intrigues you? That man is calling you. He must got those loins thumping. I don't know. I'm just saying. So then she goes on to ask Otis who he's going to pick. And he's like, uh, let me see. I'm going to pick Sheree. You know, First time on his date, you know, he really didn't give Sheree a chance. So, uh, Shaw probably like, uh, not little girl, not the daughter. Mm, you picking a grown old woman. Okay, that's how we doing it. <laughs> so, next, Dr. Nicole asks, uh, I believe she goes on to, um, Maisha and, I mean, uh, Kenneth. And Kenneth says, Maisha. Now, that's the sister who, you know, really was saying some nice things, really, you know, stroking his ego. He wasn't in his best headspace when they dated, but she was pumping him up, telling him, you know, he was, you know, a really good guy. So I guess he wants some of that good, good feeling again. So here goes Shorty in her face like, you know, I don't have a whole slew of people that I dated like the rest of you. So I guess I'll I'll pick Tavy again. <laughs> Why did she say that? 
Oh, that struck a nerve. He was like, if she want that, she can have it. She want him, she he can have her. You know that I hope they have a love connection. <laughs> he was too the real. He didn't want to hear that name. So Dr. Nicole said, Well, here's the time. You know, the time of decision. They have to think about it going forward. Is it time to move on? Or is it time to put a ring on it? Hmm? What you think? Now, here we got Kenneth. You know, he's coming in the house. He's saying it's time. He put his foot down. You know, respect um, is not there. And she really needs a clear understanding of where he at. You know, he's like, you ain't going to be talking to me all crazy, all out of pocket like you wanted. And, you know, it's just this is just the Shorty and Kenneth saga. You know, we just got more of what we always get out of them. Someone, you know, who really... Doesn't seem like they, you know, outgrown someone, doesn't want them in their life anymore. You can see Shorty just feeling like she's just fed up. She just is not there in that headspace with him. And it's like hitting a brick wall. The communication is poor. Their relationship has become toxic. And, you know, Shorty basically told him, I want you to stop lying. I want you to be consistent. I don't want any more fake apologies. You know, you say things just to shut me up. And I've been there in the past relationships. You know, you want somebody to understand you. And they basically just saying something so you could be quiet. But it's, you know, it, it's just going to go back to how it was. And she thinks that they basically have two mindsets. And so what does that tell you? You know, he said he usually fall back. And that's what you may have to do soon, Kenneth. Fall back. Now we have Fonzo going on his date with Tanisha. Well... He said she look good. You know, she a little tempting. So he got to, like, watch it, you know. So they get in the restaurant, and Fonzo says, you know, you the only person that I went on a, you know, second date with. She was like, hey, oh, I feel special. I guess so. She said, we know they had a nice time. Um, She said, you a really nice guy. You know, you funny and everything like that. And, you know, stroking Fonzo ego as always, you know, she get her little flirt thing on and Fonzo thought that was so nice. He was like, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Um, you know, the comment and she said, yeah, you know, we really vibe. We have fun together. You know, I flirt a little, you flirt a little. He was like, you flirting with me now? She was like, yes, <laughs> you know, Fonzo like that. She was like, absolutely. Now Fonzo, um, you know, that's gotten you in the pa trouble in the past before. I'm sure you know the pretty ladies flirting with you. So, you know, you, you better watch it. So, she was telling him, you know, how um, therapy was going. And he's saying, it's, you know, it's going good. And he really was learning a lot. And she said, you know, she, you know, she feels that Fonzo is tempted by all this. Because, you know, the vibe is there. But he's too busy focusing on Shay. Well, yeah, uh, Tanisha, that's his woman. You you know the assignment, sis. You know the assignment. You know what you're there for. So don't get caught up. And so, you know, when Fonzo was going on about how he was learning a lot from the therapist and, you know, trying to, to get better, you know, um, she really appreciate that with him. And, you know, I guess just going through this process for this girl, she felt he was a really nice guy. For doing that. And you know. She thanked him. He really appreciated that. And so. They continued to talk about. You know. How. I guess their relationship and communication. Has been going good. Now Fonzo. Although he's tempted by her good looks. He said she's a beautiful woman. But he respects the boundaries. That him and Shay has. And he's proud of himself. You know. I guess these little steps. You got to take baby steps. I'm proud of you so far Fonzo. Because. You could be getting grimy, but we, we shall see. You know what I'm saying? So he thanked her for coming, and she thanked him, you know, I guess for inviting her back. Then he goes, you know, I'll see if there's going to be a, a third date. Fonzo, now you know there's no more dating. Dr. Nicole, they say nothing about more dating. She said you are at decision time and figuring out what you're going to do. Now, what you got in the back of your mind? If it don't work out, you're going to hit a sister up, right? You know, where's your head at? When you talk about that third date, you shouldn't even went there, Fonzo. You shouldn't even brought that up. But we know he going to hit old girl up if he don't put a ring on it. So we got our boy Kenneth looking all nice and swagged out. Got his little boots on, going to meet Maisha. They going to some little 
private spot. I'm like, but where you, where you got her going? He's talking about we're going to have a little libations. And he got her up in this private camper. Now, I don't know if you want her, uh, anybody to see y'all in these streets that you got a sister hiding out in a camper. But maybe that was a little romantic, you know, thing he tried to do. I don't know. But, you know, she thought it was so cute getting up in the camper. And he talked about, you know, how he really, you know, she got a good vibe going on. You know, he really, really likes her. Um... And he said, oh, I see you change your hair for me, you know. Um, she was like, you know, you changed it up. She was like, yes, I did. And, you know, um, she really enjoyed, you know, the first time. And one of the things my agent was really shocked about was the fact that he did, you know, invite her out again. You know, he said he likes seeing you. You know, you you make me feel good. Um, he's like, what you trying to do to me and all this? You know, Kenneth always talking about somebody trying to take his soul. What you trying to take my soul? <laughs> But my issue was like, she's really, you know, wants to get to know Kenneth a little more. She's shocked because of the conflict of interest situation from the previous date because she knows his girlfriend. But he was like, hey, she, she, you know, got the juice to seduce, so to speak. I'm like, Kenneth, what you talking about? <laughs> you try to be, oh God, it must be a Louisiana thing. Um, then a sister got a little deeper. Maisha asked him, you know, what is, you know, I guess the worst thing that he's been through in his life. He talked about his transition from Louisiana to Atlanta, but he feels that that's the best decision, you know, that his mom could have made. You know, she did it for work, but I guess, you know, removing him, he probably was young, a lot younger, getting him out of an environment. He may have been getting tr in trouble, been out in them streets, and moms always try to look out for their children, getting them out of that environment and getting them into a better place so he really appreciated that and he, he said you know um sometimes god puts us through things to give us something better and you know he felt that was you know kind of deep and he was like how you you how you know so much how you so deep you know um where's the power pack in your back where's the hard drive i'm like <laughs> And I swear, some of the words he be using be cracking me up. But he was into her and, you know, he really likes the, I guess, the upliftment. You know, she really has his tone scale up, so to speak. Really have him vibing. And, you know, I'm looking at that hand-holding situation. You know, she makes him feel good in the process and challenges him to get through it. So, you know, it's the hand-holding for me. Look at that. That's that's very intimate to me. That's somebody that's really connecting when you put hands in hands. What you think? Put the comment down in the box. I think my agent might be better suited for him. Now, you have Char and Chris. Look at that smile. Ooh, she happy to see her old Chris again. You know, Chris, Chris be stirring some things up at her. So she smiling. First of all, I'm like, where are you going in a back alley of a restaurant? Where you, you almost like Kenneth. Like, what's this hideout spot y'all got this so intimate? Like, nobody else should see you, hear you, or any of that. So he got her in this little intimate restaurant spot. She said it was a nice place. Looked a little dark for me, but hey, I guess it's intimate and cute. So he asked her how, you know, her family felt about her in this process. And she said, they think I'm crazy. <laughs> and I mean, I guess when you're on TV doing this, you what family wouldn't? She said, you know, um, <clears throat> it's a hard thing to go through. And right now her and Otis are really going through it. Um, and they are. And they are, they have some things they really have to work out um, in how he's, you know, how they just talk to each other and how Otis treats her and makes her feel. So then she's going to sit up there and ask him. And I'm like, Char, why are you asking this? It, this really ain't none of your business. But she says it's easy for you to get women here. Look how she eating that food all seductive. Do they just throw themselves at you? <laughs> he like, no, not really. Is it easy? I said, why, Char? Put in the comments why you think Shaw is asking these intimate questions about somebody she really, if she doesn't see a future with them. I mean, I think these are intimate, personal questions. And, uh, yeah, she all for it. So he said no, but, you know, what you trying to do? Make me, <laughs> trying to make me look bad? And she was like, no. Um, And then she went on, you know, she kind of like laughed it off. But, you know, he said, um, uh... I'm not going to answer any more 
of what you're saying until we get on a third date. And so, you know, she thought that was cute, but she, you know, he said that before with the second date and he was not surprised that she asked him on a second date because, you know, with the first one, I guess he felt something going on. He saw the intrigue in her eyes, so to speak. So she went on to talk to him about, remember what Otis said to me, um, what you said to about uh, me and Otis regarding um, making me look weak. And he was like, yeah, um, what about it? He was like, because, no, um, I told Otis about it. And he said, you said what you said about taking him away from me because it's going to make me... Uh, a weak woman or you thought I was a weak woman something to that to that effect and he was like of course he would say that and really I mean think about it Char of course he would say that it's a deterrent if he can't get at Chris I mean at Chris himself Otis he's going to target his girl to make her feel inadequate or make her feel bad within herself so she won't want him to go out with him it's a mind thing Otis plays mind manipulation games with Char and that's what he did with that he knows how to use words to get to her and that's one of the things that get and it's almost like what Shorty does to Kenneth and it and it deflates her and feels insignificant people with their own self-esteem issues will do that they will say things to you to make you feel like you can't do any better to leave them um or make them less than so you can be a little bit more controlling of the situation so um, she laughed and she was like, you know, why? And he explained to her because he didn't want you to go on a second date with me. And he really, you know, he told her he didn't see her in that way. He really liked her. He vibed with her. Um, he didn't think she was a weak woman. He said he wouldn't have been tra attracted to her if she was. Um, one of the things that he uh, told her is you know he liked dating her he liked the conversation you know it just so happens that we're in a situation where um you happen to have a man so um but that's not changing how he would feel if she didn't have anyone i guess he's trying to you know get her to realize so she really um loved what he had to say she was cheesing i'm like i know her heart was going pitter patter it's something about that air of confidence, how, you know, a, a man who, you know, has no problem with women, just, you know, real cool and calm, but has confidence. And he's intelligent, let's not forget. And he's an athlete like her. So something she really loves about him is 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 pulling her in. And she was like, well, I'm liking all that. I hear you. <laughs> I've been drinking. I've been drinking. She said, these tequilas are kicking in. Sippy, sippy. I've been drinking. I've been drinking. <laughs> I'm like, sure, if you don't chill on the drinks, you're going to be feeling some kind of way and you might get in trouble, old girl. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, on the flip side, oh, Otis, that's exactly how I felt with this scene. I thought you was going to kick it up, Otis. I was like, he is so boring. So, old girl, you know, got back with him, and she was like, you know, she happy that, that he asked her to go back out. You know, he said, she said, I love wine tasting, so, you know, this is a great place. Maybe I can get you a little tipsy, you know, to open up a little more. And he claimed he was going to get deeper with this date than you know, he did before, but oh no. So she asked him, you know, is your family here? You have any family? He was like, yeah, they're in Atlanta. And she was like, oh yeah, I forgot. You know, you are in Atlanta. And then she asked how the process is going, you know, as far as the therapy. And he said, it's going good. Um, it's good. You know, um, only thing I'm concerned about is just making sure that, uh, you know, none of the guys mistreats her and, you know, that's about it. And then he starts asking, I guess, for the waiter to, to just, you know, giving him their wine tasting. I'm like, that's it? That's all you got to talk about? You are a snoozer on a date, Otis. <laughs> <laughs> so here we have old girl Shorty with her man Tavia. And she said her feelings are all over the place. But she going to give this date a chance. This is the fourth date. This is the infamous fourth date. She said that she was afraid to get. And Tavy's like, oh, this is our fourth date. And she was like, yeah, is it? I'm like, girl, stop acting coy. You know it's the fourth date because you said, you know, oh, you cheating now, I guess. huh? 
Because if you got to a fourth date, you would be cheating. So he asked her what she learned in this process. Did she learn anything about herself? And she said she did. She said, you know, even though she's one to make demands and always talking about respect, guess what? She realized that she's not treating him in the same way and giving him that same respect also. And she said that one of the things that Tavi has taught her is that, you know, not putting certain, um, what do you call it? Don't put, you know, any expectations on people. Let people be people and stop trying to mold them into who you think they should be. You know, accept them for who they are. You can't always control people and control the situation. You know, vibe with people that vibe with you. So, you know, he was happy for her that she's getting a lot out of this process. You know, he asked her she want to level up. She said, oh, yeah, I want to level up, you know, in different areas, definitely. And he said, you know, he wanted to know, like, where does he stand in this? This is their fourth date, remember? And, you know, he's feeling her. She thinks she's feeling him. I don't think, you know, anyone has been on these many dates out of all the couple as Tavy and um, Shorty. But unfortunately, she put a burst in his bubble and said, you know, when all this is said and done, she choosing herself. She says, you think there's things that she needs to work uh, at, you know, on on her own. And, you know, I guess go through the process of seeing how her relationship is going to work. Shorty confuses the heck out of me because do you want this man, um, Kenneth, or... Do you not? Because you act like you can't stand him half the time. You want him to enjoy the process and get the most out of these other women. Then you're going to say you want to try. But do you really? Then when you get with him, you act like you can't stand him. I'm so confused. And Tavy's feeling some kind of way because, you know, he said he felt like he got set up to get let down. But you're on a show, Tavia, with, uh, uh, out with a woman who has somebody. And she's at a crossroads to see what she's going to do. So he was a little disappointed in her response. But... He cheered to progress. Now we have our old girl, Shay, the notorious S-H-A-Y. She trying to redeem herself with old Asar. So she waiting on him and she don't think that he going to show up. She's a little nervous because as you see from the scene from episode six, she showed out in that restaurant. So she said he probably like, you know, I want to see that crazy Crazy B ever again. <laughs> so, yeah, with good cause, you should be embarrassed. But Asar, like the gentleman he is, he met her, didn't leave her standing. And they went to a spot to make their own candles. So they thought it was a cute little place. They checking it out. He thought it was nice. Probably smells good in there with all the different fragrances. So she said, you know, how's it going? And he said, everything's good, good. You know, but I'm a little confused. You know, you invite me back out. She said, yes, I owe you an apology. I really do because everything got a little out of hand. I could have handled the sit the situation differently, um, but I didn't. And he said, you know, it's apology there. You know, it must have been the Casamigos. It must be the drinks that they had. Um, <laughs> and uh, she said, yeah. And I also really appreciate the fact you know that you stepped in and really tried to diffuse the situation. And, you know, Asar said, you know, he was shocked because that's that's a situation that he's never been in. He never had a date in that way. So she really took him aback. But, you know, he, he likes Shay. Of course, she's a beautiful, attractive woman. So he took her up on her offer to go out with her again because he wants to get, you know, to know a little better and see where this may go. So, um... She asked him, um, you know, does he like the, uh, you know, she said the fragrance. What fragrance would you choose for me? And he said lavender. She said, why? Because I got a lavender top. He was like, no, because you need to calm down. <laughs> so I was like, that's a good one, Asar, because lavender does put you in that kind of mood. So they went through their own little chemistry test. I guess they're supposed to be whipping up flavors for the candles. And she said, let's see how our chemistry is. And he, she smelled it and. Oh, she said, our chemistry is not good because I don't know what Asara put together, but it smelled. And then she said uh, if she had a smell for him, it would be a rose. And I'm like, rose? Like no musk? Maybe with a hint of vanilla, but rose? Eh, I don't know. He claimed he had rose on, told her to smell him, but uh, I don't know about that scent. Then he had the nerve to ask her, which shocked me with Asar, are you willing to step out? I'm like, Asar, so you looking for a sister to cheat? 
really not wait until the process is over and see if she don't pick him, but step out like now as in with him. Well, she, you know, she said the right answer. I think she was real classic with it. She said, I may not be happy, but I'm not, you know, um, you know, not at a point where she, you know, they have problems, but she's not, you know, she just wants to work on those problems and she's not going to sit up there and, um, you know, I just go out. She just really wants to help, you know, work on things with her and, um, what's his name? Fonzo. So, yeah, that's how she felt about that. Um, yeah, so that's it. She says she's not willing to compromise also, um, with what it is that she wants. So with the candle, she said, what should I name my candle? He like a sar. And she was like, I'm going to tell um, Fonzo. He gets on my nerve. You smell this? You smelling a sar. Don't make me call him. <laughs> so they back now um, with Dr. Nicole. And Dr. Nicole is, you know, basically asking the couples how things went. You know, he said that he had a nice date with, um, uh, what's her name? Tanisha. Everything was pretty good. The conversation was well. You know, he was pretty proud of himself. So Dr. Nicole said, oh, Fonzo. She was like, I'm proud of him. Because Dr. Nicole was like, go tell him, Shay. Tell him. She was like, I'm proud of you. He really did good. You know, I'm proud of um the, te the steps he made because she is a beautiful girl. So um, Dr. Nicole went on to ask Shay how everything went on her date with Asar. And she said she apologized to Asar. Um, that was the first thing she wanted to know. She was sorry for how things went before. And, you know, he's a really nice person. He has the potential, you know, of being a really good guy. Um, you know, she basically is focusing on her relationship with, uh, with Fonzo. But, you know, she really appreciated him, you know, and she really likes the vibe, you know, that they have with one another. So, Dr. Nicole uh, was like... Uh, but she told her because one of the things that really took Dr. Nicole's breath away, as you see here, she was so proud of her because Shay said, you know, regardless of what happens with her and Fonzo, she realized she has to make improvements on herself and what's best for her and herself. And she's not going to jump to another guy because that would only be a temporary fix for um, dealing with what she's going through. So she thought that was a proud moment and a lot of growth on um, on her side. So, you know, uh, Shay really said, you know, she's really happy about the progress that her and Fonzo has made. They're talking more and communicating, but Fonzo still has to make some improvements to show her when it comes to him, her and his family. So Dr. Nicole moves on over here to um, Shorty. Well, Shorty, what's going on, girl? How's everything going on your end? She was like, she had a conversation with Tavy. You know, of course, Tavy wanted a little more than she could give him. Um, but she um, is going to work on what's going on between her and Kenneth. Um, and I guess basically that's it. Shorty is just, I think, a, just a confused individual. I think Shorty has to figure out what's going on within herself. Um, Kenneth really, <laughs> Kenneth was so happy. He said he downplayed last time when it came to Maisha, but you know, he really feels good when it comes to her. Um, she connects to him, you know, she, uh, you know, makes him feel like a man, so to speak. That's basically what you're saying. And he, she was like, you know, how do you feel about that? Like, you know, um, he was like, he feels good because he doesn't get that at home. He said, well, when I'm home with my lady, you know, it's always an argument. It's always some downplay, but with her, it was different. While my age, it, it, that, that whole situation wasn't the same. I guess it's a breath of fresh air, but when you meet somebody new, it's always good in the beginning. Right, Kenneth? That's what you said. And look at shorty face. She like, I know he not brown nosing in front of me. It's talking about this girl like that. And, uh, uh, yeah. Shorty, because you had no problem chopping him up in front of the rest of the couples. You have no problem with that. So I guess it's your turn. And he said it. I wanted her to hurt when I said what I said. So Dr. Nicole asked, how does she feel about what he said? She was like, 
Of course, she's not going to make them see, let her see a sweat. You know, this is grown girl shorty. She's not going to show no emotions. She said, I'm glad, you know, she had some growth. And, you know, he, you know, felt good, I guess, about his date. Some little BS, she said, because I wasn't buying it. But he was like, yeah, you know, I felt so good. I was almost acting like I wasn't even in a relationship. Um, but, you know, I was just going to blame it on the alcohol. <laughs> I was like, here you go with his lines. Blame it on the alcohol. Okay, okay, Ken. And she was like, oh, you acting like you ain't got a girlfriend? Do you want to act like you don't got nobody? Will you keep it up? Because then you won't have one. I'm like, are we jealous, shorty? Miss, I don't care. I don't want him. He got to grow up. He a little boy. I'm doing too much to take care of him. Shorty, really? Are you acting jealous? Hmm, Okay. So now, uh, Dr. Nicole goes over to, woo, Char and Otis. So she asks how everything was with them in their date and his reconnection with uh, Sheree. Did he see any improvement from the first date? And he said, yes. You know, I feel that we were, you know, uh, this is the second date and I was more comfortable now because, well, this is like his fourth date. So he's more comfortable with the situation. So, you know, he thought... Everything went good. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, okay, Otis. Uh, enough of you. So, Dr. Nicole goes on over to Shaw. Now, this was the explosion. The stomper of the day. She was like, oh, um, I had a great time, you know, on my date with Chris, you know. He is so cool, calm, and confident. And you know, that's something that I am attracted by. Yes, you are right on down to the loins, girl. She was like, oh, oh, yeah. She was like, yes. And um, one of the things he said was that he didn't think I was weak. You know, I didn't think that I was weak anyway. I was a weak woman, but no, he didn't think that. So, yeah, uh, I, um, I really enjoyed my date with Chris. So now Dr. Nicole gets with the group <laughs> and she asks them based on everything they went through. Now it's winding down. It's really coming. I think it's only like two episodes left. They can go one more time with someone or they can stay and work out their relationship. So, um, of course, you know, oh, oh, it's like I'm going to stay and, you know, work things out. He's done when it comes to the to the date and saying, you know, he don't need to date anyone again. And everybody is basically saying that, like they don't need to go any further with anyone else. Everybody wants to stay with their significant other. They, um, uh, Fonzo said, no, he want to go out with his baby. Um, uh, Shay said, yeah, she, you know, even though Osar is a nice guy, she want Fonzo to take on a date, you know, shorty want to Work it out, you know, with Kenneth. He said, no, no more Myasha. But, oh, girl, woo! Miss Goody Goody, Charlena said, uh, I think I need closure. I want to go back out with Chris again. He like, whoop, <laughs> like Scooby-Doo. I did the same thing, Otis. Closure, like, this man mean that much to you? She was like, what the? You could see, like, closure, what do you need closure for? I'm like, this is not your man, Char. I'm like, you, he already told you. You know how to find me. If things don't work out with you and old boy, what do you need closure for? I'm like, so wait a minute. So Otis came back around. You know, Petty Otis. Petty Otis like, wait a minute. Er, um, We going to stop right there. Um, I changed my mind. Uh, I want to go back. I think uh, Sheree needs another chance. I'm like, shut the door. Shut the front door. I cannot wait for next week to see what goes down. These couples, oh my God, they, they starting to make some turns on me. What is going to happen? Are they really putting a ring on it? We'll see next week. <laughs>